Are you tired of troublesome ads getting in the way of your viewing? Do you want basic protection against malicious websites? Do you want to have friendly URLs for all your internal applications and services? Well, we're going to be discussing one solution today. I'm going to be taking you through Pihole and all of the features it has to offer to help you in all of those areas. I'll also be showing you how you can route all of your DNS queries through a Cloudflare tunnel so that you can protect your privacy when you're searching online. Now I've been using Pihole for a number of years and it's been rock solid. Yes, there are other solutions to this, but it's a great all-in-one package that's gonna cover many of the things that you're gonna to wanna to do in your home life. There are a few ways you can install Pihole. The clue's in the title. This was originally designed to be on a Raspberry Pi, but as we know, any image can work pretty much on any machine. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install Pihole as a Docker container running through a Cloudflare tunnel but I'll also share an installation script from their website that you can use to do a physical installation. So let's have a quick look at the features and then we'll jump into the installation. So on login to Pihole, you'll be presented with a nice clean dashboard that will show you all of the things that you're gonna be interested in at a glance. It's gonna show you the total number of queries, the queries blocked, the percentage blocked, things like how many you have on your block list, as well as the actual number of client requests over a given time period. Going further than that, we have the ability to query logs. We can go in, we can specify time ranges, we can specify the client, and really drill down on what's happening on our network at the DNS level. Importantly, if we block something we don't want to, we have the ability to whitelist certain domains. This can often happen when you're watching TV programs, for example. We have the ability to disable blocking for a period of time or indefinitely, which can be really helpful if you're trying to debug a problem. Another really important area of Pihole is where you can add local domains. Now this features on our last video where we looked at generating valid SSL certificates that we could use in our proxy. Now if we combine Pihole with that approach, we can have internal services using a valid URL and that connection is encrypted. So that's excellent. No longer do we have to remember an IP address, we can simply put in a subdomain and it's gonna get routed to our application. You can also use Pihole as a DHCP server. Now, we're letting Sophos XG do that in our home lab setup, but if you wanted to, you could use Pihole as a fully fledged DHCP server. So okay, enough of that. Let's get down to installation. I'm gonna show you my Docker Compose files, which is gonna deploy Pihole with a pre-configured Cloudflare tunnel to make sure that all of your queries are end-to-end -end encrypted. That means no snooping from your ISP. And I'll add this config to my GitHub page so that you can download and copy it. So let's step back, let's take a look at that config. I'll talk you through some of the key areas and then we'll deploy it. So this video is gonna mark the first time where we're deploying two services within a single Docker Compose file. So as you can see, we specify the Cloudflare D container and the Pihole container. Now let's break that down a little bit further. So the Cloudflare D container sets up a tunnel between your host and Cloudflare. This is an end-to-end -end encrypted tunnel, which means that nobody can snoop on that traffic inside of the tunnel. This is really good because it means that we can send all of our DNS queries through that tunnel without it being intercepted, thus maintaining your privacy. So you can see in the environment variable, we're specifying four DNS resolvers. Two of those are Cloudflare and two of those belong to Quad9. That means all of the requests that we use with Pihole are going to get sent to either one of those through a Cloudflare tunnel. Similar to the last video where we set up a traffic proxy, we're gonna create a new network. The reason we're doing that is because we want to make a network connection between the two containers. That means that Pihole will be able to talk to the Cloudflare tunnel and send traffic and queries, but that network 
isn't available anywhere else, either within Docker to other containers or outside of Docker to other physical or virtual machines. This is great for network segmentation and maintaining privacy and security over those traffic flows. So here you can see that I've called that network PyHole internal. Moving down, we get onto the actual PyHole container itself. And this is pretty straightforward. We specify the ports that PyHole is going to run on and that's your typical web interface port and your DNS port, which typically runs on port 53. You will be required to add additional ports should you want to use this as a DHCP server, but we're not going to do that in this video. On the next section, we stipulate that we want the PyHole instance to sit on the same network as our Cloudflare tunnel. Plus, we also want to make sure that the PyHole sits on the same network as our proxy because we want to access our PyHole web interface through our proxy with SSL certificates. In the environment variables, we're going to specify that the DNS resolver, i.e. where we send our queries, where PyHole sends those, is the IP address of the Cloudflare tunnel. So it's going to route all of the queries through the Cloudflare tunnel, which is going to go to those resolvers we specified within the Cloudflare environment variable. An important parameter here is the depends on. What does that mean? Well, this is useful because it means that PyHole will only run and start when Cloudflare is available. That's good because the way we have this configured, none of those requests would get sent if the tunnel wasn't up and running. So we want to make sure before we start PyHole, we check to make sure that Cloudflare is running. Then in the next block are those labels that you've now seen within your Nginx setup. This simply configures the PyHole web interface to use our traffic proxy with SSL. So let's go ahead, create those files within our host folders. Let's mount those volumes as specified and let's run the container. Hopefully we should be up and running within a few seconds and then we can go to our dashboard. So with your configs, and your folders created. Let's look at deploying that just as we would any other container. So we navigate to the folder and we're going to run sudo docker compose up dash d and let's see what happens. So there we have it completed. Let's double check that and verify in portainer. Here we can see that the containers have been created and that the pie hole is still starting. Let's just check the logs. Everything there looks fine. Let's have a look at PyHole. That all looks good. So now hopefully we'll be able to go to our IP address and put that in. When running PyHole on a Docker VM that's on Ubuntu, there's a couple of extra tweaks we need to make. That's because port 53, which we'll be using in the container to handle our DNS queries, is already taken. I'll add the commands you need to run in a file on the GitHub page. Just paste those into your terminal, and that should allow the container to run without any error messages. Now, one tweak I've made to the config file before recording this video is to expose port 80 of our pie hole on port 500 on the host. The reason I did that is because before we can access PyHole with an address like pyhole.ourdomain.com, we need to access it first by its IP address, i.e. the hosts, the Docker VM's IP, colon 500 in this case, because we need to add a domain record into PyHole's local DNS record, such that when we type in pyhole.ourdomain.com, it's actually going to route us through traffic and then into the pie hole. At the moment, it doesn't know how to resolve that subdomain. So let's go ahead and log into pie hole for the first time using the IP address. Excellent. We've got pie hole running on our Docker host. So let's log in using the password we created in the config file. And that's it, we're in. So one of the first things we can do now is go to the local DNS settings in PyHole and add pyhole.yourdomain to it. 
That will then let you type in that URL to access PyHole securely with SSL certificates through your proxy. No longer will you have to remember the IP address, no longer will you get certificate warnings, etc. And just remember that with your DNS entry, you put the IP address as the IP of your proxy. That will be your Docker VM in this case. And with that added, you can now access your PyHole web interface using a DNS entry as opposed to an IP address. Excellent. Now as part of your steps in deploying containers, each time you deploy a new container with a web interface, you can simply add a local DNS entry and force it through the proxy. So you will get a subdomain for each of your services that's only available locally and isn't exposed to the internet. And that's it. Within 10 minutes, we've been able to deploy a secure PyHole configuration that's going to route all of your DNS queries over a Cloudflare tunnel to protect your privacy. On the next video, we're going to be jumping into how we can secure our external facing services, i.e. things like our Nginx container, by using CrowdSec.